All right guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, I'm just up here in the office, I was finishing off another video, and I got a call from a trader friend of mine asking if I wanted to buy a Golf GTI. Now, as you've seen in other videos, I'm not a huge fan of the Golf GTI, but this one sounded quite interesting. It's quite cheap for a start. Now, I've paid just £3,500 for this, and it's got a trade price of five and a retail of seven. So it sounds cheap. When I inquired and pushed for more details, it's got a fault with the gearbox. Now, it's a DSG automatic, you know, twin clutch automatic gearbox, and they're quite problematic. So I'm guessing if this hasn't been serviced correctly, then we could be into a new gearbox. But I thought I quite fancy the project, really. I might not necessarily be a big Golf GTI fan, but I know lots of you are. So I thought it might make for an interesting video. It's down on the office car park now as we speak. I've got both sets of keys, so that's a good start. So let's go and have a look around it, shall we? Right. Keys, phone, Let's go. Use my SL today for a change. Believe it or not, when I left my house, the weather was nice. Then about 10 miles down the road, the heavens opened. Right, well, there she is. I don't like the wheels for a start. I was told this has got really good service history and it was in really good condition, apart from the fault with the gearbox. So it's a, I'm going to get in trouble now with the Golf fans, aren't I? It's a Mark VI, isn't it, that? It's not the Mark V, it's the Mark VI. Which I preferred. Didn't think the Mark V was a particular high point, personally. But that's a Mark VI, and it looks all right. I've noticed a little bit of peeling here on the red GTI stripe. It's got original plates. It's a Welsh car. It all actually looks... Okay, so far, I've just spotted it's got matching bridge stones on about four or five mil of tread. There's a little bit of corrosion there on the wing and on the sill. Hmm. It's done, I think, I think he said 117,000 miles. So it's not a low mileage example. But I was assured everything on it was all right, apart from the gearbox, obviously. But that's why it's cheap. We've got, oh yeah, we've got four matching Bridgestones. That's always a good sign. Pity about the gearbox though. Now when he says the gearbox has got a fault, I don't exactly know what, what he means by that. Got a small dent there. Hmm. Does look, apart from the rib of being quite off colour on the front, but then the they do always look slightly different colour because they're a uh, different material. No, I think that's definitely had paint, actually, the more I look at it. Oh yeah, definitely had paint. It's not bad though, that really, is it? Three and a half grand? Just hoping it doesn't cost me a new gearbox at £2,000. What I might do, actually, is refurbish the wheels and get them done in silver. Just think that would look more... more original. A little bit of a scuff down there we could could always paint that couldn't we it's got a headlamp wash right okay then let me do a quick vehicle history check then using car vertical you all thought i'd forgotten didn't you so it's really easy to use all you do is go to carvertical.com type in the reg or the vin now in this case we know the reg it is charlie alpha 09 hotel hotel charlie check vehicle this will tell us whether it's ever been stolen, written off, had a mileage rollback, or has outstanding finance on it. And it's really important that you do one of these checks before you hand over any cash for a used car or motorbike. What's clever about this as well is it checks databases in 35 different countries. So it isn't just a UK thing. If it's ever been exported or serviced or had an accident in France or somewhere like that, it'll tell us. If you want to do one of these checks for yourself, you can save 10% if you use my promo code HIGHPEAK, or alternatively, click the link below in the video description. I'm expecting this to be clear, but you never know, do you? You never know. And I haven't actually paid for the car yet. I'll pay for it on Monday. So if there is an issue, I've got a chance to, uh, to go back. Right, the report's ready. So, ah, oh, we're all clear. Right, so that's a relief. Never been stolen. Never had a mileage roll back. There's no outstanding finance and there's no recorded accident damage. That's all good. Last known mileage was 113. Like I say, I think it's done 117. And it's fairly consistent every year. That's all good. No damage records. 
So it is a VW Golf GTI hatchback, front wheel drive, automatic. That's where the issue is, the DSG box. So the ownership changed in 16. Right, it failed an MOT in December 21. Ah, right. So it's passed its MOT in December 22 with no advisory items. That's quite good then, isn't it? I suppose we're gonna drive this, haven't we, and see, see what it's like. See how bad this gearbox fault is. Ah, it's got a nice, nice leather interior. I can see why these cars are popular. I mean, it offers a little bit to everybody, doesn't it? You get a nice premium car, something that's fairly nippy, I suppose, all wrapped up in a small package. Got Isofix seats, a very, very stiff sensor armrest there. Could do the clean, but it's not horrendous, is it? Lots of people on my last video, by the way, commented that we need to get a gardener in to strim all these uh, leaves. And you're not wrong. We've got a parcel shelf. We've got all the headrests. I'm easily pleased, aren't I? Unlike the clear that I filmed with recently. Ah, that wasn't the original plates. They're the original plates. Capital VW. Well, that's quite a nice sign, isn't it? Someone's obviously kept that for its, for its pedigree. Got some oil there. Shows really that someone's looked after this car. Yeah, let's have a look under the bonnet then. What could do with a good clean? Is there a date on that oil filter or not? I need to have a look at the service history, don't I really? Can't see any obvious leaks. No corrosion anywhere that I can see. Well, it looks pretty good, this. I suppose that'll be covered in under trays anyway, won't it? Right. I was just about to say, that doesn't look right. It just didn't sit right at all. But it's... The cover there is broken off it. Someone's repaired it with some uh, electrical tape, which obviously didn't do the job. I'll have to get that sorted. Right. We've got Bosch wiper blades. Always like to see that. That just caught my eye there like it wasn't original paint. But you can't feel a, a noticeable line there, so maybe it is. Now, service history wise, I better turn this camera around, hadn't I? It's a very flattering angle of me. Right, well, there are loads of receipts there for various work that's been done. Oil pickup pipe gasket, done. We've had a engine service, that was in 19. A full service in 18. Ah, right, okay, we're going somewhere here. So, it's had a DSG service in 17 at 85,000 miles. Had a new water pump in 16. A service including spark plugs in 16. So every year it's been it's been alternated. It's had a service, a full service one year, then a minor service the, the year after. Right. In June 2023, i.e. a month and a half ago, this had a gearbox oil cooler, various seals, and a DSG service at 116. That's weird, isn't it? I was told this had a gearbox fault. And yeah, a month ago, it had a load of gearbox work. Very weird. Even weirder still, we've got classic FM on. Right, well, we've done 117,000 miles. Steering locks on here, hang on. Quite difficult to do that with my knees. We've got a nice flat bottom steering wheel, very chunky. Classic FM, I really didn't expect that. Ah, we've even got the bottle opener. They always go missing. Little VW bottle opener. Got a number here for a VW mechanic. In fact, lots of business cards here. That's not a good sign, is it? For a VW mechanic. Vagtech. Vagtechnic. Or is it Vag? Auxiliary in there. Ah, joy. 
Not sure what that is really. Or is it yacht? Uh, we've got some leads there so you can plug your iPod in. More iPod leads. This is quite nice. That's obviously an aftermarket head unit because the font isn't VW font, is it? I think that's probably like an Android. Yeah, it's like an Android thing, isn't it? So we've got, oh, we've got nav though. Right, let me cover these receipts again so I don't give away anyone's personal information. Be very careful these days. Right, so my service schedule then. I wonder if this is at a timing belt. Don't these have a, t a chain and a belt? Confusingly. Hmm, none the wiser really. I'll have to ask my mechanic. Here we go then. So, it was serviced at 10, 11. Ah, Salisbury. I did that um, issue with Novi Novichok or whatever it's called. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, okay, that's good. 18, 19. 20, 21. Now, the toothed belt, that's the VW Audi name for a cam belt. So, I had another service at 114 in January this year. Another one at 107. Has it ever had a toothed belt? Hmm, no. Maybe it's a chain then. I know the older ones had both, I think. Not sure about this. Well, it's got full history, hasn't it, this? A little bit of fuel in it as well. Didn't sound very convincing, did it? We've got hmm, an engine light on. An engine light that isn't going out. Sounds quite sweet. The exhaust doesn't blow. My air conditioning works as well. This is quite a nice car, this, isn't it? Headline is just starting to sag there, unfortunately, or it's come away from that little piece there, my sunglass holder. Might be able to stick that back. It's all in good condition though, isn't it? Quite like the GTI emblem there in the headrest. Why is my engine light on? That's for taking fuses out, I think. All my windows work. How bad then is this gearbox? Should we drive it and see? I think that's the next step, isn't it? Right, we need to see how bad this gearbox fault is, don't we? I mean, it drove here, so it can't be that bad, can it? Shouldn't have said that. The annoying thing is, this car's been maintained really well. It's got loads of service history. It's in really good condition. It's got decent tyres on it, decent wiper blades. Well, we're currently in second gear. Now we're in first. First gear, second gear, third gear. Fourth gear. Oh no, right, right. It's just thrown me out of fourth gear quite violently. Back down into, well, I don't know, because my display is gone. We're doing ever so well then, weren't we? Try that again then. That feels like... It feels like we're in either second or third and it just won't change out of it. I'm trying to use the paddles behind the steering wheel and nothing. Try it in manual mode. It's just doing nothing. It's not showing me what gear I'm in on the dash. How strange is that? It was really smooth as well for 50 metres. Try in sport mode. No, it makes no difference at all. What a pity. I mean, in fairness, this car has been priced accordingly. I was told about the gearbox fault beforehand. I just didn't know what kind of fault it was. I thought perhaps it'd just be a bit clunky. I've had this several times before with VW, Skodas, Audis, where the mechatronic unit goes, so you get a flashing spanner light there on the dash, which people try and fob you off with and say, oh, I think it's just due a service. No, it isn't. It needs two grand spending on the gearbox. Well, this is quite annoying, isn't it? I'm doing 3,000 RPM at 
25 miles an hour. Let me turn it off and on again. Do a factory reset, see if that works. Right. Cool, calm. Key back in. No. It's weird, it just doesn't tell me what gear I'm in. Right, it's now weirdly show me what gear I'm in. So it's telling me I'm back in drive in first and second and third. We're all fine. Fourth. This is the same sort of time it threw me back out of it last time. The speed limit is 30 miles per hour. Don't need that sort of interference, do we? Right, well, we're now in fifth gear and it's all driving fine. Now we're in sixth, my paddles work fine. Down to fifth, down to fourth. Oh no, right, no. It's gone again. I think then this is just stuck in second gear. Because when I tried to set off then, it was quite sluggish to set off like it was setting off in second, not first. And obviously my engine light's on. Right. I think I've got to take this, not to my usual mechanic, but down to my auto gearbox specialist. See if he can try and figure it out. It's going to be a big bill, this. I can just tell. Happily, I suppose, I've already got a car at my auto gearbox specialist, which is ready, so I could swap this for that. There we go. How's that for a bit of optimism? That's an old Freelander 2 that I did a video with, and it isn't having a gearbox repair, but a diff. There was a really loud, what I thought was wheel bearing, but it wasn't wheel bearing, it was a 750 pound diff rebuild. Right, so I'll take it there then, and I'll have an update for you, hopefully soon. And we're back in the Golf GTI, and many months have passed since I started this video, and I have massively overspent. Do you remember how I was quite optimistic about the gearbox repair? I thought that it would either be the Mechatronic unit, which is quite a common issue that costs about £1,500, or it would be the dual mass flywheel and the clutch. Again, that costs about £1,500. That's what I thought. So I thought at the end of the day, there'd still be some profit in this car. Well, would you like to know what was wrong with it? Whether it was the clutch and dual mass flywheel or the Mechatronic unit? Which one do you think? It was both. Both. After we last spoke then, some, I don't even know how long ago it was, three months, four months maybe, I took it straight to Tameside Transmissions over in Droylsden. And they are the gearbox specialists basically of the area. I explained the symptoms and what I thought was wrong with it. And a couple of days later, they called me to say, right Matt, it is the clutch and the dual mass flywheel. And we've also noticed a, an oil leak from the rear main oil seal, which is quite a big job on its own. It's gearbox out. But of course, because we've got to get the gearbox out anyway, we may as well do the rear main oil seal while we're there and it'll only cost you an extra 20 or 30 quid. So that's really good actually, perfect. That's one more problem dealt with. Then a couple of days later, they call me to say, actually we've done some more digging and it needs a mechatronic unit as well. And that is a part you can only get from Germany and it takes about 10 working days and that's gonna cost you another 1500 pounds on top. Terrific. You can't beat German engineering, can you? It just confirms what I always thought. These cars are rubbish. And annoyingly, as it goes, this is quite a nice one. It's only had two owners, full service history, serviced the gearbox two or three times. This shouldn't have broken. And yet, here we are. I picked it up from Tameside Transmissions a couple of days ago, and then I ran it down to my local mechanic for its service and MOT, and just a general check over, really, hoping that it wouldn't need any more work. I was wrong again. It turns out there was a crack in the expansion tank, so that needed to be replaced. My mechanic said that I probably could have got away with it, but I thought, what's the point? I'm not risking my reputation and it'll come back and haunt me anyway, so just do the right thing, do the proper thing, and get it sorted. In fairness, my mechanic remarked on what a nice car it was. They didn't realise I'd already spent £3,000 fixing the gearbox. Anyway, such is life. The final piece of the expensive jigsaw was to get it cleaned. So I picked it up from there and dropped it off with the lads at Tameside Valentin, who did a really nice job actually. It's cleaned up well. I've just taken it back to work and taken some nice photographs of it, so it's all ready to go. What I'm going to do now, and I really don't want to do this, it's with some reluctance, 
but I think it needs to be done anyway. What I've got to do is go through my costs and work out how far in the hole I am with this car. Let's see, shall we? Get my old calculator out. Right then. I mean, on the bright side, it's a nice day today, isn't it? A bit frosty, but beautiful blue skies. Okay then. You ready for this? Remove gearbox, replace dual clutch and flywheel. Change solenoids also, and also replace the rear main oil seal. That was £1,480 plus VAT, so 1776 Then the mechatronic unit, which I think is basically the, the brain for the gearbox. It's like the gearbox's ECU, it tells it what to do. That is £1,568 plus VAT, so £1,881.60. Oh, I'd forgotten about this. The tracking was slightly off, and it had seized track rod ends. So they had to heat them up and then, you know, adjust them. The steering was kind of like that. And now it's straight as a die. That cost me £54. The MOT test fee was £40. Antifreeze was £30. Oil filter, £10. Oil, £28. Expansion bottle and cap, £43.82. Some labour brought my total there to £282.17. What else have I done? No, I think that's it. I think that's it. So my total spend is £4,063. Let's not forget the cost of the car, though, which was £3,000. Was it three grand? <sighs> Should have checked my stock book before I left. I think it was £3,000. Anyway, if it was £3,000, which I think it was, that takes my total to £7,063.77. I've got this advertised for £7,500, which Autotrader have told me is too expensive and it'll never sell. But we'll see. Somebody might want a, a well-sorted Golf GTI. I'm sure you could buy a cheaper one, but as we all know, you buy cheap, you buy twice. Why has that come on? Don't need any more negativity, do we here? I hate aftermarket stereos, do you? They never work. For some reason, every time I select reverse, my radio comes on. Oh, Jeremy Vine, we don't want that, do we? There we go, some peace and quiet. <sighs> right, okay, well, thank you for joining me on this uh, interesting, should we say interesting, rather miserable? Or pointless let's say interesting thank you for joining me on this interesting journey hopefully in the next one you'll see me profit thanks once again for watching make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already you can follow me on facebook instagram twitter and tiktok i'll leave the link below and yeah cheers guys see you next time